All right, gang, in this video, I'm just gonna add in some functionality and create a new dashboard screen in Clipflow. So I'm gonna show you how we are using view components in Clipflow, how a bit of a query that we had to solve, which is a bit of a more complex query than usual. I'm just showing you how I solved that with cursor, super easy. Well, not that easy, but it was easy at the end, but I'll quickly have give you a look at what we are going to create. So this is the screen here. It's the new dashboard screen. It shows a logged in user's current project and their task. So as things are created and then as things are pleated. So if we open up this one and have a look here, actually mark it as done, you'll see that this will disappear off the list. So it's no longer a current project. And then as they complete tasks, those things then show up here as well. So I hope you enjoy that one. Let's jump in and get started. All right, jumping in. So today we're gonna set up this new dashboard uh, link over here so that a user can see all their tasks and things like that, which is new to Clipflow V2. So to start this out, the first thing I wanna do is create probably a new controller, I think. So I'm just gonna have a quick look here. So what we're trying to do, let's just close this off, is new, let's create the, the nav first. That'll just be an easy starting point. So we're gonna go into views, shared, uh, sorry, views, controllers, V2. And then we've got our shared navigation over here. All right, so what we wanna do here is actually add in a new nav item. Have that in, so it's nicer to see. And then we're gonna grab this. Now, we don't need the channel slug because we wanna have, possibly we wanna show tasks across all. So let's just do that. So we don't need the channel slug for this. Um, and then here we're just gonna link to for now. I'm just gonna go that because we don't know the link yet. And here we're gonna go dashboard and we're gonna call this that. All right, let's have a look. There we go, we got a little dashboard cog. So realistically, I think we need a path. So projects looks like this, but we wanna probably just have dashboard, I think, like that. So let's first, let's set up a controller here. So we're gonna go into um, controllers up here, V2, and here I'm gonna just create a new file, I'm gonna call it dashboard controller to RB. And then I'm just gonna grab this like that. And then we're gonna call this dashboard controller. And then I think what we're gonna do, we're just gonna have an index note. Sometimes I find myself just fighting cursor. I don't know, all these GPTs. So this is the index, right? So we're gonna just, we're gonna set up that route. Now what we're gonna do here in the routes file. So we've got our namespace V2 and I've sorted these all alphabetically just so it's easier to find. So we've got channel slug here. So we'll probably chuck dashboard here, right? And then we're gonna say get dashboard to dashboard index, okay? So now that should create this route. So if we hit that, we're gonna get an error. You can see we're missing the index. All right, so that's cool. So what we're gonna do here is in app views controllers. So I've put the controller views into, it usually just goes views and then you'd have your controllers in here, your normal views, but we've nested it in here because we've got the view components. So we've, because of the way that we're using the view component contrib, this is a suggestion from Evil Martians, which is really cool. So now all our views for controllers live in views controllers. So that's just a little bit different. You wouldn't see that normally. In here, we're gonna create a new file. We're gonna go dashboard slash index.html.erb, right? Now in here, we can just write hello, chuck that in, and there we go, we got it. Okay, so it's running. So that's all good. So the, the first part of this is we now need to actually decide what are we doing in this, uh, this view. So in this view, we're gonna have multiple components. So we're gonna set up a components folder. I'll show you how to do that in Clipflow, or we're doing that in Clipflow. And we're using view components for that. So basically what this view here, I'm just gonna grab one from pre previous ones. We'll grab the index stuff. So what we're gonna do now is we're just gonna grab the same layout here, I like to just copy paste this across and then make the changes here. So we're grabbing from the project screen and now you can see we've got a whole bunch of components. So I'll talk you through this. So, but the main thing that we wanna do here is we're just gonna 
fix a few things here. So we're not going to have this heading right. So I'll get rid of this and we're not going to have the filters, the channel switcher in this one, I don't think. And here's the main content. So I'm just going to change that out. And then this is the sidebar content. Okay. So I like to just grab the structure, just saves heaps of time here. Um, and then what we're going to say here is this is just going to be called dashboard. So you can see here, I've got a component called dashboard layout content container, and that has a slot for a header and we can pass in the title. And then from the header has different slots for navigation and with right content. So it's a quite a cool way of like creating a little spot where things go and then you can inject content into there. So for here, I'm just going to go dashboard. I'm just going to write that in here is the center content, which is a little piece of text that sits here. And then here's the main navigation toggle. And that happens when you are in mobile. So we have a little button to toggle the content there. So let's have a look. It's already reloaded for us. So that's awesome. And now you can see. So if we jump into ideas and you can see how it all works, I just have to fix this link. So if we jump back in here, let's have a look here. So I like to do this to grab my route. So we go rails routes grep and then I'm just going to dashboard. So I'm going to find the keyword dashboard. And here's the thing, it's called V2 dashboard, right? That's our path. So if we jump into our navigation, we can now change where we change this little guy here. We go dashboard, V2 dashboard path, right? Now, if we refresh, click on that, there we go. Okay, so you can see it's all already styled. We've got our main content sidebar dashboard all ready to go. Excellent. So now what we need to do is we actually have to figure out what modules we want to show. So the way we've built this um, clip flow now is you get these little modules here and that's how we basically compartmentalize bits of content. So let's have a think about what needs to go in there. And actually before we do that, let's jump into our mobile nav. So we have a component for that. So it lives in views components and then we've got um, mobile navigation here. And this is cool because instead of using like re repeating ourselves in the partials, we've actually used components. So eventually I will re um, refactor the old navigation, this one, the partial into a component, which is a bit easier to manage. You can see to add a new link, we literally just do this and it handles it all for us. So we go dashboard and we say, this is V2 dashboard path. And you can see I'm passing in path attributes here. So it's just an, an, a nice way to like extract it on or create an extraction on top. Um, and then you can pass in variables and it automatically builds that path for us and should render should always just be true. So we don't even need to put it in because I think it defaults to true and this is dashboard. So you can see it's a lot less code here. So there we got this, this versus all of this. Okay, it's because I've pulled it out into a component. I just find that much easier. You could do the same with view partials. You could change this into a navigation link and you could do the same thing here. But I think it's just, I really prefer the when you can create a folder and then put the components inside of each other. So that you know that this link only belongs in here. It's not messy. I find it much easier to work like this. So anyway, let's check that out. If we go inspect and then chuck on the mobile view, boom. Okay, so there it is. So now we've got dashboard. If we click that, it takes us there, right? So that's our little mobile nav. So that's all working. All right, excellent. You can see how it's already mobile friendly. It's already chucking. I've got it doing a column reverse so that the, the sidebar comes to the top because usually you have filters or something like that. We want those to sit on the top so you can filter your content rather than scrolling to the bottom, filtering and then scrolling to the top. I just feel like that's probably a better way of displaying, but each to their own. Okay, so let's continue on and have a look at the modules that we need to implement. Okay, so the Figma design is very much just a concept, so we can't really build off of it too much. But you can see here, what are the core concepts? So the core concepts that I think that we're going to need here to begin with is the upcoming tasks, or basically my tasks that I need to do. Also want to see projects that are kind of the status is current. So whereas basically any project where the status is not done. So it's not the final status. So in Clipflow, you can create custom statuses and depending on the order, we count the first one that you create sort order zero as that's draft. 
So you can name that whatever you want, but that was always your first initial status. And the last status is our completed status, right? So once you hit the last, you're done. So basically what we want to do here is like, think of a way of grouping. So any project that isn't marked as done is still in progress, right? So it's like current. So we need to make sure now, or we need to create that scope so we can actually find those. So that's the thing here. So let's set up the modules. And I think to start, what we're gonna do is we're gonna have projects and tasks. That will just be the easiest way. And then it, it actually is cool to see like upcoming or uh, publishing soon, right? That's also a cool, interesting one that can probably live on the right sidebar. So let's create those ones right now. So I'll show you how I've been doing this. And I think it's so far so good. <laughs> it's been working quite well. And what I'm doing is I'm creating a component that holds the pages components, right? So it's, it's basically think of it as usually you'd have a screen and then each screen can have its special components. So if we have a look at this in practice, let's turn this mobile view off. So I've, there's a naming convention here that I'm sticking to. It's basically what is the page name and then list. So this is ideas list and then you have projects list and then you have projects Kanban, projects schedule, etc. And then when you click on a project, you turn into project manager, right? And you'll see that here. So project manager, and then each one of its components live in here. So this is the big one. This is a big component and there's a whole bunch of different things. And then sub pages have their components. So in projects we have package, right? So if you jump in here, you have package. So we have that special thing. Let me bump this up everyone can see. So you can see we have overview package and each one of these is sub and then they all have their little components inside. It's just a very clean way of organizing. And it's exactly the same as how I would do it in React. I'd create a, usually I'd name it screen, then I'd have the name of the screen and then I'd have the components in there. If it's a shared component that can live across many, I'd pull it up a level. So you can see inside of project manager, we have things that live right on top. So you have like a heading, a checkbox, a channel switcher, all of those kind of things, a button, a badge, all those kind of UI components live higher up or on the shared thing. You could create components slash UI slash and then chuck those in. I just didn't want the name becomes quite long. You know, every time you want to reference that, you'd have to be UI badge, blah, 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 or importing, etc. So I've just kept it a bit flatter. So let's move here. So what we're going to do is let me just get rid of all these, just clean up my workspace. So with that naming convention in mind, what we need to now do is have dashboard. We could probably just call it dashboard. So it usually would be dashboard list, but it's not really a list. A dashboard is a list or a collection of things. Um, so let's just call it, um, call it user dashboard. Maybe we call it user dashboard. I think that's probably gonna be the one because it is gonna be related to the user. So let's call it this. So to jump in here now, close this off. We're gonna go Rails G. I've actually got, I've done this. Let me, there we go. Rails G view component. And then we're gonna go user dashboard, right? So that's gonna be the main one. And then inside of that, so this is a cool way to generate. We can just hit a slash in there. So we're going to say um, tasks, right? So we're going to create a user dashboard component and then we're going to have a tasks module. So we're going to go bang, hit that out. All right, let's do this for the rest. We're going to have, um, so we're going to have tasks and we're going to have, uh, so we call this current projects. We could even do this. We could, let's, let's name say the projects and it's called current. So we give it projects and then status because then you can have projects current and then projects, um, et cetera, et cetera. So we're going to go projects current. Okay. So we've got those two there. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go into project manager. I'm just going to grab, all I'm trying to do here is grab. So we go to user dashboard. We go to tasks, jump in here. And we're going to paste this in here. So what I'm doing here is I'm actually just referencing the components. So you can see here dashboard layout, dashboard module. So in React or something like that, you would, you'd be doing, you'd go dashboard module from, and then yeah, it'd be something like that, right? That's how you'd reference it. And then dashboard module would have 
there and then you'd have dev tasks. So if let's just auto complete that. This is obviously not JavaScript, but if you said this would be equivalent, um, the title would be media there. So it'd be something like that, right? That would be the React world. So I'm just doing this so that anyone who's watching that's used to React, this is what it would look like. And in Rails, in view components, we're doing this. So we've got the component, do component, right? And by doing saying this, we have access to the actual components. We can have access to slots. And slots are a very cool way of injecting content into a specific location in that component. Whereas in React, you'd probably have to do something like um, header component equals like that. You do something like this where you could then control, which I actually think this way is a little bit nicer because you can write each component in its own way. But I, there are other ways you can do, you know, render props, etc., etc. But let's not digress. Okay, so now I'm just going to go media. So let's just chuck here. So they still haven't rendered that component, but we now have to jump into our controllers view. And what we're going to do here in the main content, we're going to render a component called user dashboard task. So if we now hit that, you can now see it's rendering media, but we want to change this to tasks. Okay, so there it is. So you can see now we have our tasks module. All right, so this is all using components. So if we have, want to have a quick look at what this looks like, you can see inside here, it's dashboard layout, dashboard module, and this is the module. All right, and this is the actual definition up here. So we say the dashboard module renders a content container and a footer content. So you have two basically slots where you can put things in. It also accepts a container ID, a data attribute, and title. So we use the data attribute if we want to like assign a stimulus controller to that um, module and we can change the title. Okay. And then what you can see here, I'm just using tag.send because that way I can easily spread in these params <coughs> and then do. So that's just opening up the block. Now, if a title is present, we render a header with a title in it. If we have a content container, we just render that container. Otherwise, we just render content within a predefined container. So this just allows a bit of flexibility. Sometimes the, the standard flex call is fine, but other times we want to render a more complex, maybe a grid or something else in there. So this is just a way of doing that. And then also here, footer content. So if we have footer content, we render the footer and we inject the content there, All right? Okay, so I'll just run through there. So that's our tasks module now. Now, in here, I think what we're going to do here is we're going to have an option user here. Now, there's two there's two ways we could approach this. We could approach this where we pass in the user and then grab the task for the user in the component. Alternatively, we supply the actual tasks to this component. Now, I think to main or to keep it Let's start here. We, we keep it a little bit simpler where we actually just def get the task in the component itself. I just don't want to litter the controller, the dashboard control with a whole bunch of things just yet. We'll experiment with this and see how performance goes because we, we may want to do special things with um, optimizing those queries, etc. But anyway, for now, what we're going to do is this. So we're going to go, we're going to grab tasks. But what we want to do, if we have a look at our task model, so realistically, it needs to be policy scoped as well. Um, so maybe we do actually have to, uh, we'll try to do a policy scope in here and just check if it works. But what we need to do is let's have a look at the model. And if we go to the task list item, so it's not called task. This is the problem with these tools. Like that model doesn't exist. Everyone's frothing on these tools. Like this, this is cursor with Claude, um, Sonnet 3.5. But it's still, it pulls models and things out of the blue. So I don't know, it doesn't exist. It makes sense for it to exist like that, but it doesn't actually exist. So what we want to do here is we want to look for assigned user, right? Because what we're trying to do here is we're trying to find on your dashboard is show tasks that are assigned to you. That's all we care about right now. So we're going to say assigned user is user. Um, task list. And we also want to say uh, incomplete. Right, so we should probably add a scope here. So we can say scope incomplete. Yeah, where completed that is nil. Right, 
So now we can say we're assigned we're in tasks this item incomplete. And I like to do this and ordered, sure. Um, we actually want to sort by due date. So what I'm going to do here, so let's just have a look if we have that column due at. All right. So um, let's go here. So we don't want this. We want to go order and it's not created at due at. And do we want ascending? I just have to double check that one. So here we go. So we've got task. What we want to do here, let's just first see if this if this works. So just to quickly have a look, we're going to go task.each do task. We'll auto complete all that. That's fine. Task.title. Let's just have a look if anything comes through. What do we have a problem? Option user is, def is required. That makes sense. So in here, what we're going to do, we're going to pass the user through. So we're going to go user is, e is equal to current.user. That's how we're defining our user in here. Okay, due date. Did we say due date or did we say due at? Yeah. Okay, so we have no tasks right now that are due. So let's go in here. Let's just grab some. We also need to assign ourselves. So what I'll do is let me just go through here and just chuck twos around. And then we're going to say you at where are you let me just do this in console it's way it'll be way easier where else see so we have a task list item dot or dot update or i'm going to say due at time dot let's go 10 days sweet there's that there's all due now. Let's see here. Cool. All right. So you can see here, there's actually, th th I think, three different tasks. Okay. So what we want to do just to make this render better so we can see it clearer. Let's just chuck a span on that guy. There we go. All right. So we've got four tasks there. So what we want to do now is actually render those tasks in each here so that you can actually go and probably click on that task and go to that area. So you want to be able to click the task and then from there move into the project where that's due. And we probably want to render task. Let's have a look at this design. Where are the task, upcoming task. So this is written a bit differently. But what we have here is it needs to probably read the subject. So project two and then it's like so for instance, so if we had a look here, it would be like setting up Clipflow models, then the task would be edit video so that you can see that I need to do this task in this project. Okay. So we're going to need to design a slightly different version of a task. Um, so let's ha have a think about how we can do that. All right. So to start having a think of what we want to achieve, let's have a look at what it looks like inside of a project. So. Where's what here? Yeah, this one. Okay. So this is what our current task list looks like. So realistically, we want to show something similar to this. So let's go, let's create a, um, I wonder, I wonder even what, I wonder if we could even do something like this. We, we create a more generic tasks component. And then from there we create, yeah, then we can just pass in either the tasks. It might be more flexible because then we can actually create the, you know, we could show up, you know, up, assign user tasks, sorry, or we could drop this module in anywhere and create, just pass it through the tasks. And then we can, cause then you can actually have this module repeat multiple times and, and these tasks aren't hard, hard coded. So I'm actually thinking, you could reverse this. So let's just move this. Let's make this more generic. Let's pull this out into components. Um, I th uh, is this going to work? Let me just think. The reason I'm thinking this is just because I want to create a generic task list item. 
But what I'll do now for now is let's just credit in here. We can always move it out. It's not, not that hard. So we're going to go here, Rails G view component, user dashboard. And then we're going to go here, tasks. And then we're going to go task. Okay. So we've created a task component. Now we go here and we can say, instead of rendering out this, we're going to render out a new component here, which is wrong anyway. But there is a trick here. You can just do a dot and then it would be task. But for now, I like, let's just reference the full thing because it's just easier. It's not task item, it's task. There we go. And then we pass in the task. Okay, so now when we refresh this guy, you can see it's telling us to add the template. So that's cool. Now, let's just close off some of this stuff again. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into our taskless editor and we grab this item component. Okay. Now, we don't need this complexity. So in the current one, there's drag drop, etc., which we don't need in this one because you're not going to, I don't see you drag dropping in the dashboard right now. So we're going to just chop that there, get rid of this wrapper. So this is our drag drop sortable list. Get rid of that. Bump that in. Edit task. That's fine. We don't need to leave the priority badge, the checkbox. So what we want to do here, checked is just going to be task list completed at. And I almost want to add, let's add a method, do this. Um, we're going to say here, def completed with a question mark. Just so that we don't have to always remember what the logic is to see if something's completed, right? So if it's completed, that's fine. Disabled is false. This is how you toggle. There's the title, there's the item. What else are we going to see? Let's see if there's a crash here, if I'm missing something. Taskless item, okay, that's fine. So we need to add an option here. So basically these options, think of them as um, initializer attributes, but the same way as you'd pass a prop into a component in React. Okay, so we need to just define our props. So task, and I like to call this variable the same, just so we know the model name. Okay, there we go. We got tasks now. Now, obviously these are cooked because this is not correct, but we just need to create a wrapper component that wraps these all um, so that they look right. So they need an underline, which I don't know why that's missing. And it just needs a, something to, to hold all these tasks. Okay, but that's cool. So we're getting there. Um, and let's see, can we actually... Yep, we just need to make sure. Ah, cool. So as soon as we mark that one as complete, it disappeared, right? So you can see that got completed there. And then it also will say who completed it. So the user, right? And then that actually disappeared. You saw that. So it rendered and disappeared everything there. So as soon as we click that, that task disappears. Cool. So let's go back in here. So inside of a section is where we render. So let's have a look where we render our tasks in here. So let's grab this. We're going to pop this here. So I like to name this one module component. And then from here, we're going to say module component. Yeah, I don't know. Look, it's, it's trying to say with slot. It's not called with slot. It's called with um, content. I think it's container test. No, what are you doing? The test. Man, sometimes I just fight with, all you do is fight with the friggin' autocomplete from these GPTs. There we go, it's cool. All right, so we can move. Let's pull, paste what we had before. It's not a sortable list, it's a flex col, W, it's a blank state, yes. Um, doesn't have a section. Doesn't have this. And this is gonna be if tasks.empty, no tasks. And then here we're going to render task. And then just grab that. Paste that there. Excellent. Let's have a look. Okay. 
Something's still a little bit cookie here. All right, so let's have a look why that is. Ah, you know why? Um, because I deleted this, the container class. So what we can do here is basically grab this blank state target. Okay, so we need to add a few things here. So to our new task that we've built, we're going to create a new container. And this will be class. All right, so we're not dragging. Okay, that's that. And then we just indent all of this. Fix that. So that should give us something better. There we go. So that's the actual container or for each one of these items. So we have that in the sortable one, which I actually, I just removed. So that's why it looked a bit funny. Um, and then also we need to just figure out, it looks like there's a gap. Oh, there's no gap here, but there's also, let's just have to see. Okay, so because this section's got, we've given it a different color. So we just need to fix that up probably. So we could probably change, get rid of the background, right? There we go, that looks better. Because these are inside a section, so that's why they have a different color. Okay, so that's cool. That looks good. Now, we also need to add the project or the subject. And we don't want to drag drop here. So we can get rid of the sortable. All right, don't need that. There we go. So that's looking cool. It's got a priority there. We're also going to, I mean, it's obviously it's assigned to you. That's fair enough. Um, and what else do we need here? We needed to get, that's right. We need to get the container ID and we also want this. So in here, we need an ID. Yep. And then we also need the data controller. Yep, that's right. So it's data controller, blank state. It's not data controller, sorry. It's data control, it's blank state target. So it's data, blank state target. And this is called item. So this is just for our blank state. So when we render a blank state, it looks for targets of called item. And if there are items inside of it, um, it won't render the blank state. Otherwise it, it does. So if you had a user that had no tasks here, it would just render our blank state. So what we could do here just to quickly show it is should render, we're just gonna hit this to true. Uh, where are you champion? Tasks should render true, no task, blank state. So the problem is that it's because it's got these items. So if we just change this to items like that, it should render it now. There we go. So what it does is it looks for that. So you can see it wasn't rendering because it found items. So it didn't show that box. So it's just a way we're doing a little bit of JavaScript there just to not show this. But I think what we want to also do here is make sure we actually show a better blank state. So let's just quickly work on that. So if we go into our um, task, is it our it's inside of our organizations manager and it's inside of task lists. We have a blank state here. So we want a title and we want an image path. So let's chuck that in. So we're going to have an image path. So these are just like props. You've always seen these things. So very familiar for most people. And this is no tasks. And then it's, we're going to say here, so you can see here we can open up the do block and then have a description and an action. So let's do that. We're going to grab that and then we're going to, so I have just need to go here, do. And then in here, we're going to open up this and then we're going to say here, end. And we're just going to say do and we just have to say that this module is called blank state. All right, so that variable there just lines up. And then here, now when we refresh, it's gonna, there we go. No tasks, okay? And then here we're gonna, we'll write, um, as you're assigned tasks, they will show up here. There 
there we go as your assigned task they will assign here there we go so that's what it'll look like now with blank state but now if we turn back on our item you'll see that this guy disappears so when we have blank blank state bang otherwise show here great okay so the next part is we need to identify a tasks basically subject what is the subject of a task so i think i could possibly have delegated that let's have a look so we're going to models taskless item and delegate subject there we go so a task list item or a task has a subject through the task list that it belongs to because a task list is designed is assigned to a subject which could be project and we've kept this um we've made it polymorphic so that if we add other things that could have task lists um, in the future it's flexible enough but the primary subject right now for a task list is a project right so the subject is project and then we're going to say if the so what we're going to do here is we can now get the subject and if we do that we can go into our task and we can say so how do we want this to look so we probably want it in the, the name here so let's just do this and we're going to say uh, taskless item dot subject and then dot title now we have to make sure that every subject responds to that method in the future otherwise it will crash so i mean what we could probably do here just to be safe dot respond to title then we're going to use that otherwise we're just going to go nil or we could probably you know what let's create an if block here um so we're going to say subject dot title if that is true all right let's have a look there we go so now we can see this one for some reason doesn't have a title so this is probably picking up task lists that are assigned to me but have assigned them to me and they're not actually assigned to a project that's probably what's happened here so if we have a look it could be a template so we also want to say is template is false right so let's go into oops wrong one let's go into here let's go back into our tasks component so we want to also do uh this is going to join task list and we want to say so incomplete and we want to say there's a signed user and we also want to say where task lists is template is false right so there we go okay so you saw that one just disappears so I incorrectly in the db which wouldn't happen in real life but i've inco incorrectly assigned um a task to myself as it's in a template and templates tasks are not assigned to people so that's just a um, bad data problem so realistically what i think what we could do here is instead of this because it's going to become really long in mobile and see it starts to break i think what we can do is we can shift that to the underneath so the project can kind of become the second part so let's do that instead so instead of rendering this here let's render it in here right so we now have our taskless title so i'm going to grab this yeah oh man look at this this is perfect <laughs> there we go okay there we go so now you can see brainstorm titles for no right answers upload thumbnail for no right answers edit video for no right answers great Let's do another one. Let's go here. Let's go setting up clip flow models. Let's assign a task list, All right? Okay, so just assign that. I haven't created the assigning piece yet for here. So we need to be able to assign task because we need to still add that. So that needs to come. But what we'll do is we just 
grab that here so that we can actually insert some tasks here. And then there we go. So now you can see we've got setting up Clipflow model. So these tasks are all now assigned to me. And I reckon we could even change this header of this thing to be called my tasks, yeah? Okay, my tasks, excellent. All right, so I think that's the basic functionality there now. So we can show what project is for, but what we also wanna do now is when you click on this, you should go to the task, okay? So let's set that up. All right, so let's create a link to the subject. So I think I'm gonna do some work here. So I'm gonna say def href, right? And what we're gonna say here is, um, task list item so we're going to say because we, we could, at the moment we have to support each each subject basically has a different url so if you're a a project we're going to link you into the project otherwise if you know for the future you add more and more but at the moment we just have one but let's just have a double check quickly so a task list at the moment lives on the project itself so what we could do to make it simpler and probably use less requests would be something like task lists slash one slash you know just the the show route and then that would render the screen so we could probably create like a tasks screen itself but for now what we're going to do is just render this so it actually needs to be the project here so this url we can grab this from the projects list project and actually have a look what is that called it's called the edit v2 project path right so that's the href. So what we're going to say here, we're going to say if, I mean, we could even do this now. We can say subject Yeah, I mean, we can do that. And then if we just go here, where do we have subject? So we can now just change this to subject. All right. And then We've got that and then here this is already saying there we go if subject is that then that so we're going to say return that yeah otherwise we're just going to return nil so it's so it's now subject dot channel edit v2 channel path okay now we have to be careful here because we are doing n plus one this is just n plus one city which we need to fix with um proper queries but just calling that out. Now we haven't used that yet. So let's go in here. Let me just clean this up, it's just confusing me. That's what we got open, that's the tasks, that's tasks, we need to fix that query. All right, so in here, instead of a span, we can use an, a link to. So let's just go back to and just literally grab the same thing that we're using here. So grab that bang and what we're going to do here is this and this will be taskless item title and then this is going to be not that but going to be the href we don't need this data we're not using the data link overlay and let's just move that into there so it renders properly let's have a look great all right so now we can see it's got the different it's probably very hard to see, but down the bottom. So if we click on that now, boom, there we are. Now, what we want to do is set the redirect as well. So let's close this again. Um, we also want to add the redirect here. I'm just going to tab these down. Redirect and it's good. No, redirect. And that's going to be called uh, URL four, and let's just see if that works. So URL four basically just gets the path that we're currently on. If you don't pass any parameters to it, it's just going to get current path. So now if we hit brainstorm titles and we hit back, it takes us back to dashboard, right? Excellent. And if you see, if we don't include this, it takes us to the project list. So that's not what we want. 
right? So that's why we're including that redirect. I have a special logic inside of each in this in the project page that checks for that redirect so that we can send you back to where you came from. All right, so that's pretty cool. So now we can see here and you can actually see the tasks that you want. We could even highlight um, the tasks. So let's just go here make sure that's all working again. Brainstorm titles, hit back. Yeah, great. Back, excellent. Excellent. Okay. What we could do here is also pass in the task ID. So we could say, right? Because then what we do is we could use, if we wanted to in the future, which I'm just going to pass it through right now, but in the future, when you pass through this ID, we can check for that. And if it is, we can highlight it over here so that you can actually see, see what needs to be done rather than just landing here and be like, where am I? This will actually show you what to do. Okay. So that's cool. So that's a tasks list now. So just jump back. Boom. There it is. Okay. Very simple, very straightforward. Okay. So let's now work on the upcoming projects. So let's in add this um, project's current to our controller view. So we're going to just chuck that there and then we're going to go. Don't know what it's trying to do there. Um, okay. There's the project's current user now. So let's do the same thing we did before. So we're going to grab tasks. We're going to grab this module component. Might just grab all of that. Chuck that there. Are you going to nail it? Not really. And this is going to be um, projects. Okay. So here we go. We've got current projects. So my tasks and then current projects. And what we want to do, this is where it gets a bit tricky because like it depends. Like how many of these things do we want to show here the, in the projects list? Do we want to have heaps or, or not that many? because um, you do have this projects list, sorry, this projects list here. So let's have a look what this is. This is kind of talking about current projects. Now, oh, and it's actually showing the tasks that are due in each one of those um, upcoming projects. So this is a bit of an interesting one. I just don't know how many we actually list here. Um, that's a tough one. I mean, realistically, it's only going to be your ones that are draft written. So there's quite a few here, but in, in real life, I have noticed that you usually only have about three or four. So let's, we can probably use this project, um, same tile here. So we can probably just pull that out and then use that again so that it shows up here. And we could probably have a button here also. It's like to start a new project. Um, and then you could just have, you could probably have some of the ideas possibly as well. So just want to create like a dashboard that you can land on and kind of just get a quick overview of what you need to do, I guess. So let's try and do that now. So let's go into um, models projects and let's see what scope we have. We have where channel slug, we have ordered. Um, and I guess that the, the pro here of having this in the dashboard is that you get to see across all orgs, um, not just in the other one, it's usually scoped by channel. So, you know, usually we scope everything down here by channel, but if you run multi-channel, this can actually give you a quick overview of um, things that you need to work on. Uh, so, and also that's another thing here. This one doesn't show well, this one shows every project for your channel, but you may not be assigned to that project. So this is actually useful if you're using in your team where you have an editor assigned. Now, when they log in, they only see their projects as well. So I guess we can call that my projects as well. Um, so let's go here. Current projects. I guess that's fine as well. So let's go back to this. Let's look at a scope. So what we want to do here is current and like, yep, yeah, cool, but that's not right. 
So it's basically, it's where, not. And we also want it, so we don't want done or the final status. So we have to find out what's the final status. So the way we're gonna do this is we're gonna say where not, we're gonna say status, and this is gonna be, um, it's not organization. So it's, ah, this is where it's gonna get a little bit tough. The problem is every organization can have a different status. So we have to join, this will be a complex query. Let me have a little think about it. Okay, so after a bit of playing, Around, we've managed to come up with this SQL query. Sorry, it's a very small, but it can't enlarge it. How about I just grab it and chuck it in here? So, we're selecting distinct projects from projects. We're joining on the organizations. We can join on the statuses. And then what we're saying is where the project status ID is in. And then we have this sub query here. So, it's basically going to perform and it's going to return we have a look, a bunch of rows. And what's this doing? It's grabbing the row number and sorting um, or partitioning by the organization ID and then sorting that by the sort order. So we know that the highest sort order is the one at the bottom, which is usually the, the last one from statuses. Okay, so we're grabbing that, grabbing all the statuses, grouping by organization ID, sorting them by the sort. And then we're saying we need the row number one. So that's the top one, right? And I wonder if you could even make this faster if you just limited this to one. I don't think you can do that anyway. So we get that thing there. So that's so imagine this query here is going to return us an array of all the um, organization IDs or the status IDs or the final status IDs, I should say, for those organizations that the user belongs to or that the project that that user is assigned to belong to, then we're getting that. So then the final query actually ends up looking like this. And you can see here, we're getting two results. Okay, so we're getting project with project users and the latest on Twitter. So if you had a look at Clipflow, and actually went to the projects list. You see that I have this one, the latest on Twitter X. That's complete. And then also we need to check out these ones and check out the done status. Is that right? But now what we need to do is actually flip it. So, um, I don't know if this works. There we go. We're not, right? So if we just got rid of this, we have 22 results. And if we run it, we're not project status is done. Basically, we're now getting our 20 records. So these are basically the ones that are in progress. Okay. So now we have the fun job of turning this into active record. Okay. So what I'm going to do here is paste this here. So what we're going to do here is we're going to go select distinct projects ID, right? Um, and then from projects, and then in here, we're going to say um, joins. So we can say joins organization. And then we're going to say, um, we're going to say joins status is on organization ID. So it's not joining directly to this status. We actually want to join statuses. That's what we want to do. We're getting auto complete here because we've written it. So we've got there, there. And now we're saying where not. This is going to be the fun um, query to add in. Let's have a look. This has done it here for us. Uh, it's doing active record base. So that's kind of annoying. But what we could do is we could create this query here and see if we can add that in. Okay, so I've just chucked that into um, our little Claude slash cursor thing here. And this has done it here for us. 
So it's copying what we've got so far and then it's just rewritten this here. So this is handy for converting that there. Okay. So let's see what it's done here. So it's saying where ID is, so this is written a new query. Basically that's the query up to there. And it says, oh, sorry, here it is up here. So where status select ID, where ID select statuses. So let's have a look and see if this actually works. It'll be quite interesting. It's a bit of a process just because we don't have like a done status. It's fully customizable. And that's one of the things you introduce a little bit of complexity, which isn't that much fun. But if we go here now, let's run rail C and have a look at what we've achieved and see if we've actually got it. So we're going to go project dot where uh, oh, we can actually just say current, I think. Yep. Current. Oh, what happened? Subquery has too many columns. Here's our subquery. Okay, so we can actually go and chuck that straight into here and compare it. Let's chuck that in here. Ugh, I hate that there. Inner join, left join, where not in there. Okay. Oh, this partition stuff for me is a bit over my head. Select row number over partition as, as status and so that's select. Let's see. What are you saying? Where status subquery has too many columns. Let's compare. It. What's the difference? Okay, so we're, pro we're not. Okay, so not in is the same thing. Select ID as status ID, select status as ID from. Okay, so that's where it's falling apart here. From statuses. So that's subquery that hasn't set that up right. Let's see what it says. Let's see. Ah, apologize for the oversight. And this is where it gets fun. Distinct. Let's see if this works. Now, how many have we got? 20. Okay, so that's a different, so it's rewritten. It's so crazy how this thing works. So it's rewritten it. So we're selecting distinct projects, joining on the organization where not status ID is status. Select distinct on order by organization ID and sort descending. So let's have a look at that actual so it's giving us the right number of results. Let's just run it again and have a look. Okay, so in our current one, we have 20 results. And let's run this one. So we have 20 results. And the statuses, so if we change this to that. So we don't want status ID 37 and 25. 37 and 25 looks like those are not there. So that's cool. So that actually looks like it's possibly working. So it's changed the query type. All right. Well, anyway, I think that will do for now just to get the kind of proof of concept. That was a bit of a rabbit hole. But if we get rid of that, so now what we can do is we jump back into not our task, but our project's current. And I think what we're going to do here is possibly, 
um, chuck this into the controller now. I think just just to be a little bit cleaner. So in here, um, projects current equals because what we want to do here is policy scope project dot current. Um, and then let's also chuck our tasks. Let's just see if we can do a policy scope here. Yeah. Let's see what happens. Dashboard. No. Okay, so we can't use policy scope there. So we do need this here. So let's go tasks. So we've got tasks and projects current. And we could even call this user tasks. And this needs to be current dot user. Fix that, please. Nope. Current dot user. All right. So now we've just changed that a bit. Get rid of you. Go here. So now what we're going to do is we're going to pass in tasks. And this is just going to be user tasks because we've defined them in controller. And then here we're going to have projects. And this is going to be projects current. So we just have to refactor this a bit. So we're not pass, we're gonna just pass tasks in there. And what I like to do here sometimes as well is just go default and we're gonna chuck proc and we're gonna say task list item.none. So if we do pass in nothing, nothing crashes. It's just a nil scope. And here we're gonna say, yep, projects come in there. And let's just make sure. So that's the dashboard controller task index and we're passing projects through there okay cool all right let's give that a spin excellent so now we've got our tasks loading there um, and we do also need to you know go through here and actually fix up the joins and stuff just to make sure we are loading the polymorphic the subjects we're not doing n plus one queries because we don't want that but that's okay for now. So content. So now let's just have a look. What I'm going to do is if we go into projects current, go here, and I'm just going to write out projects, each project, and let's just do that. There we go. All right. So that's the whole project. We don't. Ah, uh, yeah. That shouldn't be it. Equals uh, these. GPTs are great, but they make so many mistakes. Um, there we go. Okay. So we now have our projects listing. So next piece of the puzzle is we also need to add. So in here, and we also want to say uh, where uh, assigned user. So we want to be able to say where assigned user. So we need to join on the projects users. Um, so we're going to say, let's create a new scope here. I'm going to go say scope where assigned, assigned to user. Yeah, that's cool. Okay. Joins project users. Yep. Where projects users user. Nailed that one. Sweet. Good job. So where are we now? Controller. So we want to do current and we also want to say we're signed to user. Okay. Are you going to crash? No, there we go. There we go. We've got even fewer now. So you can see, so if I'm not assigned to that project, boom, gone. So now I only see my projects. Excellent. Making some progress. So let's go here. So we'll get rid of the task because we're done with that. Dashboard controller, projects current, we're still working on that. Don't need that, don't need that. So what we want to do now is we actually want to use this projects list component. So let's go and run that one. So here we're going to run a credit component. That's going to be projects list slash project. And let's just make sure we don't have to pass anything else into it. Nope, that's it. Excellent. Let's have a look. Excellent. There you go. And that's it. So now this gives us like a quick 
the current projects that I'm assigned to. So you can see I'm assigned to all of these ones, um, which is cool when you're an owner, but we probably want to limit that. We probably want to sort that by the date the, or the, the scheduled date, I reckon, because you want those top ones to show up first. So the ones that are most urgent to come to the top. So let's do that. Um, I'm going to pull this dashboard control to the front. So what we want to say here, order, and it's not due at, it's scheduled date. And that's descending. Let's see. Whoop, schedule at, scheduled at. Nope. Oh. It's scheduled date. Why did that order complete wrong? Scheduled date. There we go. Um, Saturday 24th, so it's reverse. That's the wrong way around. So we need to go ascending. Yeah, sorry, ascending, because you want the earliest date coming first. Um, we also want to make sure, like this one, I guess that doesn't have a date. So yeah, that's fine. So we want to show that as well. And I almost feel like, I guess this is zoomed in. So let me just, sorry, just check my zoom. Um, we want to go to zoom. There we go. So that's what it looks like actually. And I reckon we can just show possibly limit this to 10 because I don't think we need more than that right now. I think 10 would probably be good. So let's check a limit on that as well. Limit of 10. 10 projects, you can't really work on much more than that at a time. Even five would be um, quite important record so here so i have to get this one out this one was due on the tuesday the 24th of june and it's and it still needs to go to edit it's only in edit phase so like if realistically let's open this up in the kanban board so that was edit email templates in react so if we can find that one where are you well that date's actually passed already so that's why it's not showing in the kanban but what we can do here let's just go here and say make it done Right, save it. Now let's watch what happens here. This one should disappear. Boom, gone. All right, and that's how we can make things go away. Realistically though, we probably don't even wanna show these because if you've passed them, they, you've missed the date, but the only problem there is if you've missed the date and you're still working on it and it's only a day or two behind, you probably still wanna show it. So we won't completely destroy that um, let's see if I have a scope for that yet I don't um, okay so that's fine so these are the current projects that I need to work on so that's looking really cool and here are my current tasks so that's looking really cool all right so the only other thing that we could probably add to this dashboard is um, I think what do we have we had publishing soon or t um but i guess that's kind of what what does that even look like because this these are also publishing soon that are current that you need to still work on um so i don't know what we can really do there um i wonder what we do here i wonder if we could possibly move this up and the tasks here so let's just try that and the nice thing about what we've done here is this lives right at the front here so if we move tasks into the sidebar, what does that look like? So that's kind of cool too, right? So you've got your current projects that you're assigned to, and then you've got your tasks here, okay? And I think the final thing that I want to do here quickly um, before shutting this really long stream down is just create a blank state. Okay, so in here, this usual thing. So we've got our component there. Let's go in here and set up this. Just going to grab all of that, chuck it in here and cut this and put it there. All right. So it's no projects. Um, as you're assigned, uh, let's say as you're added to projects, they will appear here. 
blank state project list and I think hopefully this project tile has a blank state controller in it yes there it is excellent so should render true I'm just gonna cut this out so I can see no projects there we go chuck that in now that goes away excellent uh, we need a gap here though flex gap boom that's looking nice um, I do want so let's go to the projects dashboard of the list and then we can actually grab this blank state action So that's blank state with description, blank state action. So we can allow the users to create. I'm just going to put that, comment that out while we work on this blank state. Oh, hello. It's probably that that I've done there. Let's just do that. New project, undefined. Ah, because we're not in a channel. So we need to actually find the channel that we want to go to. So with projects, it actually needs to be inside of a scope. All right. So we need, to, so we can't actually add that button just here. Let's just leave that as that. Get rid of that. Okay. There we go. All right. So that's looking pretty cool. I'm pretty happy with that right now. So. I think I'll leave it as that for the stream, otherwise it'll get too long. But hopefully you enjoyed watching how that all comes together. Got a quick overview of looking at view components, etc. Um, and played along with some SQL. So I'll catch you on the next one, guys. Thank you.